AMD says the majority of its buyers prefer GPUs in the $100 to $300 range. Pretty fair bet. I think they were saying about 84% of their buyers are in that range. And so with Polaris, their focus shifted away from Halo products, like the high-end stuff, down to more mainstream focused segments. And that makes sense for a company trying to fight where they can make the most money. So that's what AMD's looking at for the RX 470 and 460, which as of today, we have a little bit more news for you, but it's not that much more over the review of the RX 480, which had a table for specs of the 470 and 460 in it. If you did not see that, the 480 is being left to focus on 1440p gaming and the 470 is looking at the 1080p segment. First, the RX 470 uses the Polaris 10 GPU and has the same architecture as the RX 480, including compute preemption and asynchronous shaders, but it is a cut down version in terms of stream processor count and the clock rate. The RX 470 will host 32 CUs as opposed to the 36 CUs of the RX 480, and that puts us at 2048 stream processors. Knowing that each CU has 64 stream processors, this isn't actually new information. So they didn't officially say this thing has 2048 stream processors previously, but it was pretty obvious because they did tell us how many CUs it had. So that was calculable pretty easily. The new stuff though is the clock rate. So the RX 470 will operate at 1206 megahertz boosted and 926 base. And that's with the 2048 processors. It's got 128 TMUs or texture map units on the 470 and for perspective, the 480 had 144 of those TMUs. It's operating with 32 ROPs and memory operates on a 256 bit interface with a 6.6 .6 gigabit per second effective memory speed. It's hosting four gigabytes of GDDR5 and that's with a 211 gigabyte per second memory bandwidth. Display interfaces include the HDMI 2.0 spec and display port support for HDR and HBR3 up to 1.4 display port and TDP is listed as 120 watts. Just as a reminder, don't fall for the trap that a lot of people fall for. You cannot compare TDP cross architecture or cross brand. So when we talk about a 120 watt TDP for the RX 470, you can't turn around and say that's equal to whatever NVIDIA cards may have a 120 watt TDP of 1060, what have you, or 150 watt as the case may be. Uh, this is more of a measurement of the cooling potential required to keep that, or the, the cooling power required to keep the chip at a manageable temperature. It's not just plug it into an O-scope and the output is 120 watts. It's not how it works. So you will need to look for our power testing with the 470 for a look at its actual power draw, just as you'd have to look at it for the 1060 or what have you but uh, TDP is 120 watts. The only thing you can compare that against is internal brand, internal architecture, TDP, so that would be against the 480 or something like that. In terms of the memory subsystem, the RX 470 has the same memory subsystem as the RX 480, so that means it's got the same delta color compression. It has other uh, similar optimizations in the memory pipeline that reduce the power consumption of memory in a non-trivial way. It's 40% lower power or so versus previous generations and that helps with the overall reduction of power and that lower TDP we're talking about. Uh, Delta color compression is the same. The way the memory works is the same as the 480. So the only thing that's really changed here is the capacity, the bit width and things like that for the interface. And in terms of the release date, the RX 470 will be available effective on August 4th. And the price is undetermined. AMD decided to do uh, another news announcement of these cards because they missed their mid-July and end of July release dates. Pretty standard in some regard for these, uh, these types of products. But they missed those release dates. They put out another news announcement today with a TMU count and things like that. But the price is not yet known. In terms of performance, AMD is saying that the 470 should be about 1.5x faster than the 270, which is two generations old now, one to, depending on how you count the architectures. Uh, so 1.5x over that. We don't have the card yet, but hopefully we'll get one for review. The RX 460 will be on Polaris 11. It's got 14 CUs with 896 stream processors, and it's clocked at 1200 megahertz boost and 1090 base. The RX 460 will have 56 TMUs and 16 ROPs, so it's about half of what we're seeing for the most part of the 470. And performance is up to 2.2 teraflops. Again, Polaris 11 kind of indicates that. 
Memory runs at an effect of 7 gigabits per second on 2 gigabytes or 4 gigabytes of GDDR5 with the interface 128 bits wide. That puts memory bandwidth, by the way, at 112 gigabytes per second. We've seen some confusion lately as well as to how memory bandwidth is calculated. So just as a reminder, it's pretty simple, but you, you have to do it in the right order. First, divide the bus width and bits by eight, that converts bits to bytes, eight bits in a byte, and then multiply the actual memory speed, not the same as the effective speed we see here, which is seven gigabits per second. Multiply the actual memory speed by the quotient, so whatever the interface divided by eight equals, you multiply those numbers, then you multiply again by two for DDR, and then again by two for GDDR5, which gives us 112 gigabytes per second. TDP for the RX 460 is at less than 75 watts, so it can function entirely off of PCIe. And price for this card is also unknown. It will be releasing on August 8th. We should have the price for you hopefully a day or two before then, but if it's not something we can publish yet, then I guess you'll know about it on launch day. So August 8th for the 460, that's the low end card, and August 4th for the 470, which is sort of low end, but in that mid range market, I would assume closer to $150 for the 470, which would put it in competition with NVIDIA's 950, at least as of today. And uh, the 460 is probably gonna be closer to competition with something like the 750 Ti in terms of just uh, brand versus brand stack up. Notebooks are also important though. So with the 980, NVIDIA was able to move that chip to notebooks in its entirety. It was not a cut down version of the 980. And AMD is doing the same thing now. This is because the TDP of these chips these days is lowering enough that it can be put into a laptop without making an M version, i.e. 980M or 480M or what, what have you. So that's been kind of moved away from AMD is going to be bringing its full Polaris chips, the 470 and 460, certainly into laptops. And they're not cut down models. The notebooks will have a lower TDP on the chip versus the desktop counterparts just nature of thermal throttling and concerns with laptops, pretty normal stuff. Uh, so it's, it is on the manufacturers to make sure these laptops are cooled, of course, as always, but the TDP is low enough that they're ditching the M suffix for this at least uh, immediate stack up of GPUs coming out. So they'll be leveraging the 470 and 460 to hopefully regain some of that notebook arena that's been basically all Intel and Nvidia the last few years for the most part, other than a couple of APU products. As far as testing, I'm hoping to look at both four and two gigabyte versions of the 460 so that we can see what that difference actually looks like in the real world, kind of like we did with the 484 and eight gigabyte versions. I'm thinking it'll probably be ROPS limited and that two gigabytes is about where we'll see peak performance, though there may be some titles where four gigabytes makes sense, four 1% lows and things like that. So you can see our RX 488 versus four gigabytes benchmark for a look at that. In terms of the rest of this stuff, that's that's really where we're at with this. So August 4th and 8th is what you need to look out for, waiting on pricing information. As always, Patreon link the post video, subscribe for more content, and I'll see you all next time.